Good morning. Uh, yeah. Morning, family. Great to see you. Uh, happy Sunday. Uh, caught me a little bit by surprise. I had to double check the time and what day it was. Um, get my head in the game. Lovely to see you. Uh, thank you, those who are uh, already with us. It's great to see you with us. Why don't we pray as we uh, begin our time together this morning? Let's pray. Almighty and eternal God, you are hidden from my sight. You are beyond the understanding of my mind. Your thoughts are not like my thoughts. Your ways are past finding out. Yet you have breathed your spirit into my spirit. You have formed my mind to seek you. You have turned my heart to love you. You have made me restless for the rest that can be found in you. You have planted within me a hunger and a thirst that make me long for the eternal satisfaction of heaven. Lord, I praise your name because you have imprinted a seal on my inner being, not leaving me to my own poor and petty ways or to be ruled by my passions and desires, but calling me to be an heir to your eternal kingdom. Bless you, Lord, for knocking on my heart's door and reminding me of your presence. Bless you, Lord, for your hand on my life and for the sure knowledge that however I might falter and fail, your everlasting arms are always underneath me. Lord, you alone know what lies before me today. Grant that in every hour I might stay, I might stay close to you. Let me be in the world, but not of it. Let me use this world without abusing it. If I buy, let it be as though I have nothing. If I have nothing, let me be as though I have everything. Do not let me embark on anything today that is not in line with your will for my life. Nor shrink from any sacrifice that your will demands. Suggest, direct and guide every movement of my mind. For my Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. Great stuff. And we'd love to uh, pray for you this morning for our, for our church family. Uh, why, why the church family? If, you, if there's anything that we can uh, pray for you, do let us know in the comments. We, um, we've heard already from uh, Nikki in our church family. She says, my aunt passed away uh, this morning. We've been praying for uh, Nikki and her family and particularly for her aunt for a number of weeks now. Um, so, Nikki, we're really sorry to hear that news. But, uh, yeah, let's remember Nikki and her family in prayer. Um, Ken, who is part of our church family uh, and is a bus driver, um, said last night, may I kindly request uh, prayers for some of my colleagues at work who have COVID-19 um, and some of their relatives also have it. Um, we've prayed for, for Ken and for, for, for transport workers and for uh, those in his position, but let's continue to pray uh, for those uh, that Ken knows and those that he doesn't in, in that same field who uh, are having a tough time of things right now. Um, but yeah, if there's anything else that we can pray for uh, for you, uh, having a quick look down the comments, there's nothing else that's come in uh, just yet, but do share if there is anything. And as always, we want to pause and pray this morning for those who are unwell. We want to pray this morning for those who are anxious and those who are grieving. Uh, you will know people. And why don't we, in a moment of silence, uh, bring those people before God in prayer. It would be good as well to pray for our local community. Now, for uh, most of us watching, that will be uh, Chingford and particularly South Chingford. Um, but mindful that we also have others joining us from elsewhere around the UK and, and across the world. Um, wherever is local to you, why don't we pause and bring your own local community uh, before God in prayer. Pray for uh, local businesses. Pray for local schools. Uh, for whom life is very different right now. Pray for our leaders locally. Uh, 
whether that's a council, the government, the uh, mayor, councillors, whatever local leadership looks like for you. Uh, pray for our police and our emergency services. Wherever is home to you, why don't we pause and bring that community before God in prayer right now. And so, Father God, would you, in these moments, hear us as we pray. Hear us as we bring before you those who are known to us who are unwell. Those who are anxious, maybe worried about loved ones, maybe worried about uh, jobs and livelihoods. Maybe aside from this virus, they're anxious because of the usual day to day, family concerns, children, relationship difficulties. As we hear the news this week of uh, the massive rise in uh, domestic abuse cases, Father, we pray for those who are affected by abuse. Hear us as we bring before you those who are grieving at this time. And we uh, pray particularly for uh, Nikki and for her family as they mourn the loss of uh, Nikki's aunt. Lynette, who is part of our church, says, please pray for my friend Jean uh, in hospital. And so we, we, we join Lynette in praying for Jean and all of us, many of us will know those who are unwell, who are anxious, who are grieving. Hear us as we bring them before you now. We pray your peace. We pray for your comfort. We pray for your healing. Hear us as we pray for our, uh, our towns, our communities, our uh, local businesses and, and those whose livelihoods depend on them, our, our schools their staff and teachers and those whose children uh, are affected during this time. As we pray for our leaders, uh, give them strength and wisdom, we pray. We pray for our police and our emergency services. Thank you for their uh, work and we pray your strength and your blessing for them. Here as we pray for Ken and his friends uh, on the buses, keep them safe in these days. Lord God, thank you that nothing is too big for you and nothing is too small for you. Thank you that we can share every uh, aspect of our lives, our, our concerns with you. In Jesus' name, amen. There's uh, one other prayer request I'd love to share with us uh, this morning. And that's for uh, another one of our mission partners. Last week, we took time to pray for Samaritan's Purse and we saw a little bit about what they are getting up to in this time. And we um, heard from uh, Pastors John and Tando at Blanket Mine Church in Zimbabwe and we prayed for them. This morning, I'd love us to pray for our, our friends and our mission partners at Open Doors. And uh, so there's a short video that I'd love to share with us now uh, from Open Doors uh, that reminds us that no matter how difficult things get for us here, uh, we have brothers and sisters in other parts of the world uh, for whom following Jesus is a whole lot more difficult, uh, not just during this virus, but all the time. And uh, so here's his open doors. What would you do if your faith put you in danger? If it meant facing insults and abuse, not getting a job or education, being assaulted, imprisoned, even killed. Hundreds of millions of Christians live in countries where choosing to follow Jesus means danger and persecution. And these are the five countries where their faith costs the most. Number five, Pakistan, where Christians can be falsely accused of blasphemy. 
they are denied education and work opportunities. Churches are bombed. Christians are jailed on false charges. But Pakistani Christians are determined to meet to worship. Number four, Libya, where there are only some 150 Libyan Christians. Churches for Libyans are forbidden. Christian migrants are targeted, executed by militants or sold into slavery. But Libyans are coming to Christ through TV, radio and web. Number three, Somalia, where Christians can be killed on the spot. All citizens are assumed to be Muslims. Militant groups want to eradicate all Christians. Owning a Bible can mean instant execution. But Christians meet in secret and many Muslims seek Christ. Number two, Afghanistan, where Christians have to hide, even after death. Islamic extremism is everywhere. Christians are buried as Muslims because their relatives would be punished. But people still meet Christ in dreams. Number one, North Korea, where leaders are worshipped like gods. There is no freedom. People live under constant surveillance. 50 to 70,000 Christians are imprisoned. But in prisons and safe houses, North Koreans are coming to Christ. Open Doors exists to strengthen and support persecuted Christians wherever they are and for as long as they need it. Through the gifts and prayers of Open Doors supporters, our global underground networks are able to reach millions of Christians with food and medicine, spiritual care, smuggled Bibles and Christian books, training and legal advice. Homes are rebuilt, lives are rescued, churches restored. For over 60 years, Open Doors has stood with Christians whose faith puts them in danger, who dare to share Jesus no matter the cost. Because as Christians, we are family, one body, one church. And when your family is in danger, there's only really one question to ask. What will you do? Great stuff. Uh, some of you will remember uh, not too long ago, we, uh, in partnership with Open Doors, took up a collection to uh, smuggle some Bibles into North Korea and uh, grateful for, for their reminder just now. Why don't we uh, pause and pray for our friends at Open Doors? Father, thank you for the reminder in that video of uh, the price that our brothers and sisters around the world are prepared to pay to follow you. Thank you for their courage, for their faithfulness, and we pray your uh, blessing for them. We pray your protection for them. And we thank you for uh, our friends and partners at Open Doors for, for their work. Thank you for the support and the encouragement that they bring to so many around the world. And we pray uh, for their uh, for your blessing on them in these days, that you would protect them, uh, provide for them, enable them to continue to serve uh, those around the world through these days. Uh, strengthen our friends, our brothers, our sisters through difficult times, we pray in Jesus name. Amen. Happy days. Um, let's pause there. And uh, uh, who was with us last night for our quiz evening? It was great to see uh, so many people uh, join us on Zoom for our quiz night. And uh, a massive thank you again to Sophie and Ralph for uh, coming up with the idea and for putting it together and leading us through. Um, thank you and well done for those of you who joined us and especially those who won prizes. There were uh, prizes won for first place, for second place and for last place. Um, and a very well done to everyone who joined us and especially those who won prizes. Um, if you are a prize winner, you will probably already know um, 
there was one person who won't know because they'd given up and gone to bed by the time we got to the end, so which is why they got the last place prize. Um, but prizes will be making their way to you uh, in the next couple of days. And uh, so do look out for your prizes. Uh, and thank you for those who joined us yesterday. I'd love to uh, give us opportunity right now to uh, to come around our giving and to give. Um, if you uh, have access to the internet, which if you're watching this, you, you clearly do, um, the easiest way to give is online uh, through our website, chingfukong.org.uk forward slash give. And remember, we see giving as an act of worship. Uh, we see our giving as an act of uh, putting our trust in, in, in God and his provision. Uh, through our giving, we recognize that everything we have isn't ours. It comes from God. And we give back to him uh, out of what he has given us. Uh, so that we can be a blessing to others and the ministry of the church and the outreach of the church can continue and uh, the good news of Jesus can spread. And so uh, thank you to those who uh, are able to support us either by direct debit or by uh, regular giving or online giving. Uh, your support is allowing our church to continue to function through these days and to continue uh, to share the good news of Jesus with those who most need to hear it. Um, as well as our giving, if you are new to us, if you um, maybe have come across us by accident online uh, for whatever reason, and maybe this is your first time watching us, please don't feel under any pressure to uh, give today. You are our, our guest. Um, but what I'd love to give you a, a chance to do right now instead is during this time, while others are uh, preparing to give, is if you maybe if you have a phone, you can do it now. Head to our website, chingfukong.org.uk. And uh, on the homepage, there's a big blue button at the top that says I'm new. And we'd love to keep in touch with you. Uh, our church family is looking a little bit different right now. And the way we uh, do church is different at the moment. But uh, we'd still love to welcome you amongst us, to keep in touch with you, to pray for you, to support you, to encourage you, uh, to help you follow Jesus. And uh, so if you're new to us or if you have been maybe watching for a while but haven't uh, owned up to it or, or, or got connected with us yet, uh, today's your day. Why don't you head to our website? Uh, details are right on the screen there and click the I'm new button, fill in the form. There's no sales pitch or marketing ploy, um, but I'd love to get in touch with you and welcome you amongst us and uh, yeah, get you connected into the life of, of our church. Um, great stuff. If you have a Bible, which I am sure you do, because uh, it's the same rules online as it is in church, bring your Bibles, uh, then turn with me to Luke chapter 24. And uh, I'd love to read just a couple of verses this morning, uh, verses 50 and 51. Uh, we see this, then Jesus led uh, them, that's his followers, to Bethany. And lifting his hands to heaven, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he left them and was taken up to heaven. Do you know when you sneeze or when someone sneezes and people say, bless you? Do you know where that comes from? It comes from uh, the plague, from the Black Death in the 1300s. Um, I was reading this morning, 50 million people died uh, during, that, during that time. And one of the symptoms of the plague was when you started to sneeze, it would be a sign that you'd, uh, you, you'd probably caught the plague. And so people around you would say, bless you, because the chances are that you were about to die. Um, now, sneezing and, and, and bless you because you're about to die aside. Um, what a great picture we see in these, in these verses. These are the last moments that Jesus uh, spends on earth before he gets taken back up into heaven uh, after his resurrection. And the very last thing that Jesus did on earth, it's got nothing to do with sneezing or the plague, um, but the very last thing that Jesus did before he was taken back up to heaven after his resurrection was bless his followers. And I'd love us to uh, reflect this morning on uh, God's blessing. And I pray that you would know God's blessing uh, today. And this morning, there's 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 two things that I'll, I'd love us to pause and uh, reflect on. And the, and the first is the, the act of blessing. Don't mind me. Uh, the act of blessing when Jesus uh, blesses his followers. Uh, Hebrews 1 verse 3. Uh, tells us this, that the sun radiates God's own glory 
and expresses the very character of God. And he sustains everything by the mighty power of his command. Uh, just that line, the sun radiates God's uh, glory and expresses the character of God. Here's the deal. When Jesus blessed his followers, the blessing of the God of heaven and earth is expressed and conveyed. And, you know, God's blessing is an amazing thing. Who knows that God's blessing is a great thing? When the Bible talks about blessing, and particularly in the New Testament, the Greek words uh, that the New Testament uses when it speaks about uh, Jesus blessing his followers is uh, eulogia. It's where we get the word eulogy from if you've been to a funeral. Um, and, and, and eulogia means uh, to praise, to uh, speak highly of. When someone blesses someone, they praise them, they speak uh, well of them. The New Testament in itself doesn't have much of a theology of blessing. We don't see much about blessing in the New Testament. But in the Old Testament, uh, especially blessing carries a lot of value and a lot of meaning. Blessing uh, bestows power on the recipient, often uh, descendants, you know, for, for the next generation to continue uh, to work in the name and the power of the, the giver of that blessing. Um, in different places in the Old Testament, the concept of blessing includes the provision of peace and prosperity and just general uh, well-being. Another thing about blessing that we see in the Old Testament is that it is uh, permanent and unshakable. Uh, let's look to Genesis. Genesis 27, verse 33. We see this. Genesis 27, uh, verse 33. Uh, it's a story of uh, Jacob and Isaac and Esau. Um, Isaac began to tremble uncontrollably and said, then who just served me wild game? I've already eaten it and I blessed him just before you came. And yes, that blessing must stand. Uh, still in your Old Testament, flick forward into 2 Samuel. Uh, 2 Samuel chapter 7, uh, verse 29. And we see these, these words. And now may it please you to bless this house so that it may continue forever before you. For you have spoken, and when you grant a blessing, O sovereign Lord, it is an eternal blessing. And so uh, a blessing is permanent and unshakable. And another thing that we see through the Old Testament is, is that blessing is unconditional. Blessing isn't based on the merit of the recipient. It is based on the grace of the giver. Let's pause and just let, sink, let that sink in for a moment. Blessing isn't dependent on the merit or the worthiness of the recipient. Blessing is based on the grace of the giver. Friends, here's the deal. Know that God loves you, that he cares for you. Know that God speaks highly of you. He thinks you're amazing. Know that God makes available to you his presence his power his provision and his peace and i pray that you would receive god's blessing today maybe you've never stopped to consider that the god of heaven and earth knows you and loves you and cares for you and thinks you're great and provides for you today you can know god's uh, blessing you can know his power, his presence, his provision, his peace. And think back to those words when Jesus uh, blessed his followers. He raised his hands as a priest raises his hands to bless the people. He blessed his followers as one who had authority, commanding the blessing that he had purchased on the cross. He blessed them as Jacob had blessed his sons and put his father's name on them. But he didn't finish because it says that while he was blessing them, he left them and was taken up into heaven. 
Jesus ascended to heaven mid blessing. He didn't uh, finish giving his blessing. You see, any blessing that you or I experience here on earth is just a tiny part of all that God has for us. And if you've been around churches or Christians uh, long enough, uh, like I have, maybe you've heard uh, when people start saying, oh, God is blessing me because I've got this new job or uh, I've come into some money. God is blessing me. And you look at your own circumstance and you think, well, I haven't got money. God isn't blessing me. Friends, two things on that. God blesses us in different ways. He blesses us through his presence, his power, his peace, as well as his provision. But also any blessing that you see here on earth is only a fraction of the blessing uh, that God has uh, stored up for us in heaven. Amen. So that's the the act of blessing as Jesus blesses his followers. But also I'd love us to uh, reflect this morning as well on the on the place of blessing. Uh, Because those verses tell us that Jesus led them as his followers to Bethany. If you are a regular part of our church, you're going to be shouting at the screen right now. I know. But if the Bible tells us something, it is because we need to know it. And when you look through the Bible, uh, when the Bible tells us, uh, when it records events, and if the Bible tells us when it's recording an event, where that event happened, it is because the location has a significance. Uh, So think through the times that the Bible says that uh, something happened in the temple. Jesus went into the temple and turned over the tables. Uh, The location, the fact that that happened in the temple is significant. Uh, When the Bible tells us about things happening in the marketplace or in the in the in in the town center or or in people's homes or uh, or in the wilderness or in the city or uh, in the Jordan River, wherever. When the Bible tells us where something happens, there is significance in that uh, location. Uh, now, we we went through some of this in our uh, Thursday small groups. I was testing this out uh, on, on those in our Thursday small groups. So if you've heard this before, um, I don't apologize. Uh, stay, stay, stay with us because I think there is something important in here. Um, times that the Bible tells us where something takes place are because there is significance in the place that these things happen. Um, Jesus led his followers to Bethany. And he blessed them when they were there in Bethany. Um, In the New Testament, Bethany uh, translated means uh, house of affliction or place of affliction, place of uh, suffering. And I'd like us to pause and and, and reflect on that this morning. Note that Jesus led his followers to a place of affliction, to a place of suffering so that he could bless them. Let that resonate for a moment. I don't know who needs to hear it Uh, this morning. Someone does. Note that Jesus led his followers to the place of affliction so that he could bless them. Note as well that even for Jesus, the route to heaven passed through the place of affliction and suffering. Ignore those people that tell you uh, that if you put your trust in Jesus, it's a smooth ride all the way to heaven. That is nonsense. Even for Jesus and for all of his followers, the route to heaven, the route to uh, God's eternal kingdom for the follower of Jesus passes through Bethany. It passes through the place of affliction and suffering. Bethany is mentioned 14 times in the New Testament, um, and that refers to five different events, five different occasions. And uh, some of those are mentioned in more than one gospel. Uh, which is why uh, the place named Bethany is mentioned 14 times. But it's spoken of on five different occasions in the Gospels. And I'd love to uh, point us and take us in the Gospels to those five occasions because they show us something about what happens when Jesus leads us to and through the place of affliction. Uh, I hope you're with me so far. Uh, So five times in the Gospels. Look with me in John chapter 11. 
in John 11, we see the story of Lazarus uh, being raised from the dead. We're not going to read it, so I don't know why I just said to you to, to, to look with me, but now you know where John 11 is. You can read it in your own time. Um, John chapter 11 tells the story of Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead, and that happened in Bethany. Lazarus uh, lived in Bethany. We see that John 11 verse 1. A man named Lazarus was sick. He lived in Bethany with his sister's Mary and Martha, keep that in mind. Uh, we'll come back to that in a little while. But Lazarus was in Bethany. So that miracle that John 11 describes uh, of Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead. Here's the first thing that happens. Miracles happen in the place of affliction. Remember? Life is brought to dead places in the place of affliction. Uh, number two, uh, in Mark chapter 11, uh, we see, cast your mind back just a couple of weeks, uh, to Palm Sunday and uh, Palm Sunday tells the story of Jesus entering Jerusalem uh, but the Palm Sunday journey where Jesus commandeered the donkeys it starts Mark 11 verse 1 tells us in in Bethany as Jesus and his disciples approached Jerusalem they came to the towns of Bethphage and Bethany on the Mount of Olives and Jesus sent two of them ahead to go and get the donkey and cast your mind back if you were with us on Palm Sunday we spoke about the donkey and we said that Jesus could have on that day, gone into Jerusalem any which way. He could have gone on a horse, on a bike, on a BMW, whatever. He could have walked. But he chose to go in on a donkey because the Old Testament uh, prophecy said that this is how you will recognise your king. And so Jesus chose to go in on a donkey to fulfil prophecy so that people could uh, see who he is and recognise that he was a fulfilment of God's prophecies. Here's the deal. God is revealed and his purposes are brought about in the place of affliction and suffering. In the place of affliction and suffering, God is revealed and his purposes are brought about. Amen. Uh, here's number three. Matthew 26. Matthew 26, look with me from verse uh, 6 through to verse 13. We see the story of uh, this woman who uh, anoints Jesus. And we're told while Jesus, verse 6, was in Bethany at the home of Simon, um, a man who previously had, had leprosy, um, he was eating and this woman comes in and breaks this jar of expensive perfume, pours it uh, over his head. And uh, people are, are shocked. Why are you wasting expensive perfume on Jesus? Worship is costly but precious in the place of affliction. When you are in tough times, your worship will cost you something, but it is also precious. It is worth something when it comes from a place of suffering. Number four, uh, Luke 10 from verse 38. We see uh, the story of Mary and Martha. And cast your mind back just a moment ago when we were in Mark and we said uh, that Lazarus lived in Bethany with his sisters, Mary and Martha. Uh, so here we see them, Luke 10, and we see a wider story from verse 38 to 42. And uh, again, read it in your own time. It's when Jesus is at their house and uh, Mary just sat at the Lord's feet. Uh, listening to what he taught, but Martha was busy uh, making dinner and getting stressed and uh, Jesus praises Mary for not rushing around, for just sitting at his feet. When we are in a place of affliction and suffering, we can learn to rest in the presence of Jesus. And the fifth one is uh, those words that we've read today, Luke 24, verse 50, that Jesus's ascension happened in Bethany. And before he ascended, he blessed his followers. There is blessing for God's people in the place of affliction. Amen. Friends, I pray no matter what your circumstance, and I don't want to uh, unduly pass off the time that we are in as affliction. Uh, there are people around the world right now who are going through far worse times than we are. But all of us know what it is to go through times of affliction and suffering and difficult times. And so I'd just love to remind us this morning that in those times, there is blessing for God's people. Uh, in those times, uh, miracles can happen. Life 
can be brought to dead places. God reveals himself in those times and his purposes are brought about. Our worship can be costly, uh, but precious. And, and we can learn simply to rest in the presence of Jesus and soak in uh, what he says. And I don't know who that's for, but I pray that it's for someone that today you would know God's blessing, uh, no matter the circumstances you are in. Why don't we pause and pray? Come, Holy Spirit. Fill us right now, wherever we are, whatever our story, whatever our circumstance. Thank you for your blessing. Thank you for the uh, reminder in your word that uh, your blessing uh, empowers us. That there is nothing that can remove or shake your blessing when you bless us. Thank you that you don't bless us because we're good or because we deserve it, because we're not and we don't. You bless us because you are good and you love us and you care for us. And, uh, so, Lord God, wherever we are right now, may we receive your blessing. May we know your presence with us, your power at work in our lives, our our circumstances, our, our families, our homes. May we know your provision. May we know your peace. Would you bless us so that we can be a blessing to others? Fill us afresh with your Holy Spirit right now, we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Great stuff. Um, so church wouldn't be church without notices. So uh, just a reminder of uh, what is coming up this week. Uh, there is a prayer group on Wednesday uh, at two o'clock and uh, Thursday small groups as normal are back this week at 10 a.m. or 7 p.m. And uh, all of those happen on Zoom. And the details uh, are there on the screen, uh, the meeting ID and the password that you need. Uh, so if you're able to join us to uh, pray on Wednesday or to share together in small groups on Thursday morning or Thursday evening, we would uh, love to see you. And um, I think that's everything. I'm not aware of anything in particular uh, that needs to be uh, announced. And so uh, beyond that, just a reminder, if you're new with us, we'd love to connect with you. So why don't you head to our website? Um, but until then, uh, have a lovely day. May God bless you. Uh, may you know that blessing. And uh, we look forward to seeing you soon. Have a great day, church. God bless.